Good morning, this is Jack from net, and this is the pre-market recording for Friday the 7th of um, September. Right, um, let's start off with um, ES. Now, ES, we had a pretty nice looking bottoming setup yesterday. We've got a 60 minute buy signal fixed um, on ES here. We had a very nice um, nested double bottom sequence yesterday. There are a couple of things to say about it. The overnight action has not supported the low. Um, it's supporting some kind of a flag forming. Stan's looking for a lower low, and this is supporting his um, his view. Now, it might be that we're going to break up anyway, um, and this declining resistance is key resistance for today. I've got that in about the 83 area currently, but, um, but at the moment, I'm not really expecting it to break. Um, so we shall see. Now, um, when we... Um, if we go lower, then I've got a pretty decent looking support trend line there. I am wondering whether we can get down to 55 today, if uh, Stan's talking about that. But on the bigger picture, what I'm looking at as the ideal target for this move, and this is where I'm really looking for if we get a move down below the monthly pivot, is this trend line here. I've now got this in about the 28.53 area on SPX, maybe 28.54. Um, that should be a couple of um, handles higher on ES. So that's um, so if we see Stan's um, 2855 that gets us to this trend line and the ideal low for this move is to hit this trend line find support there and reverse back up and do a hundred handles to the upside um, that would be very very nice indeed it would give us an extremely clear target um, and I would love to see that we may well still see that we shall see right in the short term I've moved the trend lines a bit this morning um, this is the falling megaphone that is likely to be a flag. I've got megaphone support currently in the um, 28.62 area. This would suggest that if we're going to hit 28.55 this afternoon, not going to be penetrating this trend line by much, um, that we're, we're likely to do that in the afternoon rather than the morning. Um, may well make a low today. If we do see a low today, I'll be looking for positive divergence on the 60 minute chart. We don't have any of that at the moment. In fact, this hasn't quite made target, um, but it's made the possible near miss target now. Just having a quick look at the other indices on RUT, we have again made the possible near miss target, but we've not reached the full target. Um, not expecting really to get down to this, poss um, this rising support trend line. This is a decent rising support trend line. There's just no particular reason to hit it now. Um, so we shall see. Oh, by the way, I forgot the disclaimer, I think. I'll just say it now. Our disclaimer, we do this for educational purposes only. We're here to share our technical analysis with you. We hope you can take some of what we're doing and learn from it, transfer it to your end charts, and not issue, issue trading signals. Right, let's have a look at NDX. Um, NDX has already made the target. We do not have positive divergence yet. Well, I had a tiny, tiny bit there, but not enough really to mention. Um, I'd be expecting to see more. If we're seeing a lower low, retest the low today and a lower low, then I would expect positive divergence to start on both the RSI 14 and the RSI 5, and that's something I'll be watching quite carefully. Let's switch over to NQ. NQ, I've got a peachy falling channel here. Um, I've got falling channel resistance not too far above. This looks like a flag forming overnight. What I would say is, ideally, what we would see today, we've got this very nice tight falling channel here. It's actually far better than the megaphone, which is currently um, to a significant degree theorist, theoretical. But this channel, this is a nice channel. Um, so what I would like to see is a move up to channel resistance currently 2083, 2884 um, in the morning, and then a fail from there down into the 50s. That would be really, really nice to see. It would make the um, trading today extremely easy. Um, and I'm thinking we may well see that. Um, so that w might require, of course, breaking this channel resistance on NQ. Again, this is another nice channel, very nice one. Um, but it's been weaker. Um, it's not necessarily going to follow the ES up if we see that bounce into it. We shall see. CL. Um, CL is in a very nice channel, and we've got back to channel resistance um, at the monthly pivot. This is double resistance now, and we will see. If we see a break up over it, um, then obviously we're likely to see a, um, a decent little rally. It's probably not going to get that far, but um, we could certainly see not really seeing a move to the weekly pivot at this stage, um, but we can see maybe 68.5 or something, but likely we continue down afterwards. Um, my lean would be we're probably going to fail right here um, and do the next leg down into the 66 area, so we shall see, um, which is where channel support is at the moment, or slightly above it. 
Um, NG, NG, I don't really have a support trend line here, and this could be under throwing here, but, I'm, but I don't think it is. Uh, we're on a 60 minute buy signal, but it's trending through it. This is a strong trend. We have a nice resistance trend line here that's currently in the 2.782 area. Um, and when that breaks, we're going to see a rally, which I wouldn't really see as a opportunity to go long here. Um, I think Stan's looking at cycles and we're expecting it to go down to 2.62 after a bounce. So I think any bounce is an opportunity to reshort or add size. Um, so watching that with interest. GC, um, GC broke up from this pretty obvious flag. Um, I think Stan's expecting it to go down here. I think that is dependent rather on, G on DX, and I am thinking that DX might go higher than Stan's expecting. So the obvious target for this breakup would be a retest of this high. I'm still thinking we might get that. If we did, that would actually set up potentially the second high of a double top to get us back to a full retest of this low, and that would get us lower than Stan's thinking. Um, we shall see. Anyway, but I think, actually, no, I think we'd need a decline on DX to deliver this. I think DX may well be starting a rally here, but I'll come to that in a minute. SI. Um, SI, amazing seeing it at these levels, really. I think we're probably going to see it go a bit lower and retest the um, bear market low at 1365. Not sure that's going to be immediate, but I don't have a real support trend line here to um, to give an indication as to where where we're finding support. Um, we think at the moment, I think this is likely to be some kind of a bear flag forming. Right, HG, um, HG, um, we have a perfect falling channel. Um, falling channel support is now currently in about the um, two point five four area. I'm not really expecting to see more than the marginal lower low under this low here. Um, so, um, but while this, uh, while this channel resistance holds, um, currently in about the 2.655 area, then, um, then, then obviously channel support is a target. It's a nice channel. It should give us a pretty good indication as for when, um, this is breaking up. Um, we shall see how that goes. Um, but so far overnight, it's broken this rising support. This is promising for another leg down. Right, ZB. Um, ZB is breaking up from a double bottom here. It's not like perfect double bottom. The second, um, the second low is a bit higher, um, which makes it look more flaggy than it would otherwise. Um, is it a flag? It could be. Um, in which case, we're going to see a failure here, just as we have been seeing so far. But I think it's more likely that we're uh, looking at a double bottom here, and it's going to take us back to declining resistance, which is currently at about the 144.09 area. Um, we'll see how that goes today. I think we're just pulling back a bit. We're establishing a support trend line, and then we'll do another leg up. That's my lean. If we're going to see lower today on ES, that's a pretty good. That's a pretty good match with what's going to be likely happening on ES as well. Um, what happens when we reach this trend line at double resistance um, at the weekly pivot and the monthly pivot? Um, obviously, weekly pivots just for today. Um, we shall see. Um, but uh, nonetheless. Um, I think we're probably going to reach it. We could turn back down there if we reach it. Okay, um, DX. Um, DX, I haven't switched this into the number yet. I'm switching it over tonight. Um, in the meantime, um, this is still finely balanced. Um, it's testing weekly um, pivot support, which I'm leaning towards holding on this move. If we uh, if we break it, that opens up um, a short-term retest of, um, of, the, of the August low. If we um, don't break it, which I think is more likely short term, then we could see a move back to Stan's talking about the 95.4 area, a monthly pivot. I'm looking at the potential IHS there is here in the IHS neckline, which is currently in the 95.7 area. Um, if we were to see the ideal way for this to play out would actually be to go back to there, break up slightly and fail hard in a Janus flag setup, which takes us into new lows. That's what I would like to see. Um, so um, equally, there's an option that once we broke up, it wouldn't come back. We'd go back and retest the 2018 high, or we could fail before that. I'm not really expecting that IHS to make target. I would be surprised to see that, but I think it might give it. It might have more life in it before it fails. So um, Stan's looking for a rally here. We've got a bit of positive divergence, not enough for a signal because it hadn't gone low enough beforehand. Um, but um, I'm leaning towards a rally too. Um, the key point is weekly pivot. If that holds, then um, then then there is very much scope for a rally here. UUSD. Um, UUSD, I've got, um, this is a potential flag. 
Um, I'm looking at this currently mainly theoretical channel resistance, um, flag channel resistance just over 1.165. Um, if we see a break up over that, it could be this is a flag which has formed and is breaking up. This looks like a small flag forming overnight. Um, if we see a retest of this high, it could be it'll run straight up, in which case um, DX will break support and go down. Um, this is just interesting because it's not the same setup really that we're looking at on, on DX. And this is potentially more bullish for EURUSD and more bearish for DX. Um, watching this with great interest. USD JPY, a 60 minute buy signal fixed overnight. So I've got a potential megaphone here bit big to be a flag, um, but it's a nice looking megaphone. If this is the case, then it's heading, probably heading back to megaphone resistance. Uh, I've currently got that in about um, just below 111.75, watching that with interest. Certainly we've got the buy signal for it. We'll see what happens at monthly pivot and weekly pivot resistance. USD CAD. Um, USD CAD's broken down from a kind of, well, not high quality um, double top. Um, we have reached, actually I've got a sell signal here. I haven't marked it in, but it's there. Um, although it was gone a bit low before it fixed, but, um, but anyway, we've come back, um, we've been retracing, um, the obvious target, if we're going to be back testing this broken resistance would obviously be in about the 1.3085 area. Um, I don't have a clear view on direction here. Um, but I think overall I'm leaning short on DX, so I'm leaning short on USD CAD as well. Right. Um, Australian dollar, Australian dollar keeps forming potential, um, double bottoms and then going lower. This is the current, the latest one. Um, we're still on a weak 60 minute bicycle, but it was fixed quite a while ago. I'm not really taking that too seriously. Um, I'm pointing out the potential setup, but I don't really have a directional lean. KC, um, KC, we've got a beautiful um, potential double bottom here, and we are heading back to um, double resistance, uh, double bottom resistance and trend line resistance, um, which I think is the obvious next target, and which is currently in the one point 0675 area. Um, and we'll see what happens there. I think um, if we see a break up through those, then the chances are the low is in on KC. We've got positive divergence now. We got the lower low. I think Stan's still looking lower on this, but um, I think this resistance is likely to decide. SB. Um, SB, we're retesting this high. Nice move up. This has actually gone up 10% in um, this channel. This channel, however, could be a bear flag. Um, and that's worth noting. We've got a possible 60 minute sell signal brewing. We haven't quite made the IHS target in the 1120 area. I think we're probably going to make that next. Um, after that, this could well break down. This could be a bear flag. Um, in which case, we'd like to see a retest of the low. CC. Um, CC stands looking short here. We still haven't quite reached my trend line. I think maybe another test of 2350 might deliver that. Um, it is looking like potential unfinished business, but I don't feel strongly about it. We shall see. No current divergence. Wheat has gone lower. Um, where do I have support? The obvious trend line support is at 500. Um, if we get to 500, then I will be wondering about a retest of this low here at 489 and three quarters. Um, I don't think Stan's looking for either of those targets to be hit. Um, I think he's looking for, you know, 505 or something. So we shall see how that goes. At the moment, there's no positive divergence. Um, I've got nothing strongly saying it's going to move up, but I do have a um, okay-ish resistance trend line and a pretty decent support trend line. So, we'll, and we're staying in between those, so we shall see. Right, corn. Um, corn's been pulling back a bit from the um, the monthly pivot. Um, it's pretty close to a week, test of week to pivot support. That's only the week to pivot for today, of course. Um, no current divergence. If we can break below this 362 area, I am wondering about a retest of the low to make nested double bottoms. I'm also wondering about a potential retest of this low, which this very much potential unfinished business below. Um, I was surprised we didn't hit it on the last leg down. It may be that we're going to come back to hit it. Soy. Soy, again, we didn't quite retest the low. I'm wondering whether it's going to need that to, unlike corn, we're still on a four hour bicycle here and that hasn't reached the possible near miss target. Okay, great. I'm going to stop the recording there.